Hello and welcome to the show which is supported by Media Proxy. Now we've spoken to our next guest on a couple of occasions now and most recently about audio over IP in broadcast. Yes, in the world of audio over IP, Dante seems to have emerged as the leader. So with an update of how things are progressing, please welcome back JJ and Matthew Fletcher from leading audio solutions provider HHB. Hi JJ, Matthew, good to see you. Hey Luke, good to see you. Hey guys, nice to see you again. So, I understand you've been having a play with some new Dante products. Tell us, tell us a bit more. That's right. We're here today to talk about Dante AV, which is um, yeah, a fairly new technology, certainly with mm -hmm. equipment being on the market, but um, something that Ordinate have been uh, talking about at trade shows and events for a few years now. Um, and the first products have just started to come to market in the last few months. Um, and Dante AV, as the name suggests, is, is video as well as audio. Um, but it um, integrates extremely easily with Dante audio networks. So yeah, Dante AV, the, 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 the new, this, okay, this new version. And as you say, there's already a lot of uh, audio only Dante devices out there. Is everything ready to sit on the same network? Are they all talking to each other? Are they all happy, playing happy families, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, Dante AV works on one gigabit network, as does the audio only Dante. And in fact, it isn't really okay. new in terms of the tools. Um, Dante Controller, which sets up all the routings for Dante Audio, is the same application. You plug in a Dante, AV device and it will appear with its audio, its video and any control connections ready to route in the, the same way that people are used to routing audio in Dante. So the first thing I thought about when I saw the term Dante AV, because obviously we're familiar with Dante as it is, was Dante AV, how does it compare with MDI? Is it is it similar? Are they used for the same sort of applications? Well, Dante AV is... Um, not a sort of a full uncompressed broadcast um, standard. Yeah. It's using one gigabit networks, so it's um, it's using JPEG two thousand compression to really get the uh, get down to the one gigabit network. So it's not full broadcast, um, and it's um, it certainly has some of the sort of control protocols that you can um, connect um, serial and other IP control data over the network, but it's not um, a fully featured broadcast solution like uh, MDI. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough, because we're talking about a one gig pipe here. And in, in <clears throat> you know, we have fancy codecs in the video world to get the pictures down at, down a pipe. Is it, is it as simple as it's just JPEG 2000 or, or is there anything else in there? There's a mixture of resolutions that you can run at and frame rates, um, but yeah, you can do yeah. up to 4K um, at full frame rate um, down that one gig pipe, um, <laughs> thanks to that compression. Um, and it means that you can use standard switch gear, whereas a lot of the NDI and, and other um, video over IP solutions require 10 gig. So Dante AV looks pretty straightforward and easy to implement and use, just like Dante for audio. So is the feature set comparable? For example, can it still be locked down like other Dante devices? Yeah, absolutely. So um, on the face of it, it's plug and play. Uh, we go into the Dante controller. Um, the devices will automatically populate and we can choose either all of the connections or which specific connections. For example, this camera has the ability to send picture, but it also has the ability to receive RS-422 or 232 for uh, remote PTZ control. Um, similarly, other devices might be audio only, and therefore um, you can then attach to um, existing Dante audio devices. Um, and take the audio stream from that camera and utilize it elsewhere. Um, equally, there's other boxes that have HDMI inputs that could be attached in an AV environment to something like a Blu-ray player and take the eight channels of PCM audio from there in order to get that into the playback system. Um, and on top of that, it's Dante Domain Manager certified and compatible. So that means that we can then lock it down to a per user basis and mean that Either people can't see it or can see it but can't change it or have full levels of control. 
So we've established that it's a, you know, it's 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 JPEG 2000 down a one gig pipe. It's it's not really to be uh, uh, compared with NDI, really. But where, where is this Dante AV going to take off? What are there going to be some typical applications and some popular environments for for these solutions? So the the ease of use of the endpoints um, really means that for for having a transmitter and receiver in the same box uh, that could be um, distributed in sort yeah. of uh, commercial AV applications, events, touring, um, as well as um, more uh, fixed installations like houses of worship, um, as conductor relays, as um, use for uh, it can handle a uh, human interface device. So you can actually do keyboard and mouse control over it. So it can be applied for, for KVM and um, presentation applications in, in education. Um, and really, as the devices um, grow into the, uh, the technology, there's going to be more and more partners, more and more manufacturers, and, and therefore more products coming to market, which will fit other solutions. That's right. And, and existing um, Dante Audio users who are using video equipment, when they come to replace or, or add to that, they can easily integrate Dante AV into their existing networks. And there are also um, applications in the broadcast world as well for um, sort of auxiliary cameras and putting in sort of small cameras or in difficult positions. You know, for example, sort of commentators yeah. on a sports ground having a be able to cut to a shot of them um, in breaks in the game, that, that sort of thing, where it might not be easy to put a, a large broadcast camera or there might not be the, um, the infrastructure at the uh, the stadium or, or the location, but, uh, but if you can put a Cat Five cable in, you can put Dante AV in. Mm. Is it I just another idea that just came to mind? Is that actually because we're doing a lot of, even though we're supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, working in in the offices and working in suites a lot more, but we still will have a lot of people wanting to work remotely. This could be. Tell me, I'm wrong please, or uh, remote cameras. So if you've got people in a, in a, in a audio finishing suite or an edit suite, it, you know, video editing suite, people could see that, you know, it would help with remote, uh, um, uh, remote working, I guess, in, in a, in a, in a finishing environment. Is that, is that possible? There's certainly possibilities for it. It's, it's still somewhat reliant upon how that connection is made between multiple sites um, where we have seen similar devices in use um, is quite common in VO booths and that VO relay where you may have fewer VO booths than studios yeah. um, and be able to then patch so you've still got that kind of personal communication for, for getting the right performance from the, yeah. uh, from the artist. Um, and I think as, yeah. as bandwidth sure. grows and um, connections to, to home environments is uh, faster and more stable, um, I think that's definitely going to become another aspect mm -hmm. equally you can do the camera control portion uh, remotely and independently of the um, real-time connection which means that you can have remote operators for um, for camera positions and, and ordinate have done some tests with Dante AV on a music session which I think I believe the connection was between Nashville and New York so so several hundred miles um, with a sort of dedicated fiber connection and the musicians performing in those locations found it very easy to, to work together. Um, and so in some ways it was um, a bit easier than being in a sort of live room with lots of glass and several doors to get through to the control room. It sort of had a, mm. had a sort of very sort of immediate feel and a collaborative feel. So, so yeah, there are mm. applications like that as well. Mm. And latency is a big yeah. part of it, but you know we're actually using the very camera we're talking about on on this connection, um, so it's you know well, it's very way. very workable. Yep, you can switch to uh, showing you a shot of what we've got here. So, um, see the shot JJ and I was the uh, the bowling camera here, the HD camera, which is connected to our little network interface, and then we've got the bowling decoder, which is taking that Dante feed and and feeding HDMI out into our, our little video switch. Um, we've got the pan tilt um, controller on the camera and um, yeah, yeah, it all, all works very well. And if I recall the preset, should go back to uh, the right position to, to point at JJ and I. 
be able to see you. Yeah. So in terms of hardware, um, I mean, the PTZ you just showed there, I'm guessing is a Dante AV specific camera. What sort of um, what sort of hardware is out there? What do you need? And also maybe what can we look forward to seeing as um, this standard goes further? Well, here today, we've got the, the Bolin HD at PTZ um, Dante AV camera. So it's got Dante AV built in. There's a um, Cat5 port on the back of it. Um, it can be powered by PoE or separate power supply. Um, and that's going through the network switch to the um, Bolin Dante AV decoder, um, which is giving us our HDMI out. We'll also shortly have a decoder with SDI and as well as the HD camera, there's a 4K version of that PTZ camera. Um, there's also a company called Pattern who have encoders and decoders. Um, so you can plug other cameras into the encoder. And um, Bolin later this year, um, should only be a few months away, we'll have a transcoder. So that could act as a decoder or an encoder, depending on which firmware you, you load into that. Um, so there is a, a small amount of equipment on the market now. Um, there's more that we know of coming very soon. I'd be very surprised if there weren't uh, more vendors, a lot more equipment in the, uh, the next few years. In, in terms of support, um, Matthew, I'm guessing that to a lot of people, this is going to be quite new. What are, what are some sort of HHB doing to, um, to offer training resources and support for people that may now be transitioning to this IP environment? Well, people who are familiar with Dante will find it reasonably straightforward to, uh, to connect this. Um, and we do offer mm. training and support and, and advice to um, Dante customers, um, audio customers, and you know, that will extend to AV. So AV, rather than being sort of completely new, it's, it's really just sort of an extension of the existing Dante training and Dante infrastructure. Um, so on the network side, it's, there isn't really anything new to learn um, on how Dante actually works. So it's more about you know, what you can do with the AV, what's happening, what, what the uh, specific mm. equipment is and specific applications are. But the um, Ordinate have a lot of training courses online. We offer bespoke training and also support um, packages for customers um, who, are, who need um, third party support on their uh, their networks cool. yeah and I'd, I'd add that the the so ordinate where, training is yeah. really fantastic the um the resources there are completely free there's a lot of video based material with um sort of live interactions of with the software in order to get up to speed with um plugging devices in populating the network making your attachments of, of patches subscriptions um, and the various settings from there. And it starts from a really nice, easy entry point and just builds on from there. There's an AV specific portion that talks about some of these devices. Um, and that's just available on ordinate.com. That's right. And the different levels are really useful because it's sort of level one, two, and three. So level one's fairly basic. It's just get you started. Level two is a bit more in depth. And all the salespeople at HHB have, have level one and two certification, and then level three is a, is much more into the um, the sort of infrastructure of the network and a um, lot more sort of IT based, um, of which our tech support uh, um, colleagues you know have level three training, and um, and then there's you know, as JJ mentioned, specific AV and specific Dante domain manager training is available as well. The level three geeks, brilliant. Um, we, we, we'll, we'll, um, we'll point people towards ordinate.com and of course I think uh, well I guess for you it's hhb.co.uk is that that's correct link yes. to it there yeah cool well brilliant thank you very much for coming in and telling us a bit more about it and uh, uh, as we say um, th th those are the websites to, to, to go and um, to go and find out some more we look forward to seeing lots of new products to discuss in the coming 12 months or so I hope Keep an eye on hhb.co.uk, go and get some training. And uh, thanks to Media Proxy for their support uh, of Kit Plus TV. And thanks to you for watching. See you next time. <laughs>